In part one of the unboxing of an MSI Creator 15, I did a review of the computer itself and its capabilities. Now we're gonna talk about how to set it up so that it's safe. The reality is that if you leave it as ship, the Windows 10 Pro that is preloaded does some crazy spyware stuff and we have to undo that. Also, the way most people set up a computer is not safe. You will likely get malware or get hacked. In part two of this unboxing video, I will tell you how to make this computer safe, safe from Microsoft and safe from hackers with 12 specific tips. Eventually, I'm going to dual boot this computer with Linux, which would be safe by default. No special thing will have to be done, which is crazy that we would use Windows 10. But unfortunately, some tasks for some people, like video editing for me, has to be done on Windows, so we might as well learn how to do it right. Stay tuned. I post my videos ahead of YouTube on odyssey.com. I have a link in the description so you can follow me there. We all need to use a VPN, and I think it's a given that you should trust the person offering the VPN service. Instead of giant corporations, why not use Byte's VPN, which is my VPN, and it comes with Pi-hole ad blocking, Tor routing option, no logging, servers all over the world, and a real person behind it that you can trust. The link is in the description, and your support of this product will also help this channel. Thank you. Microsoft has been trying to play catch up once again. Since Google, Apple, and Facebook are collecting so much of your data, they want to partake in this bounty too and start collecting data for their big giant database. So Windows 10 is chock full of Microsoft spyware by default. It's incredible how many things are here to spy on you. Fortunately, unlike a phone, there are things you can do to eliminate pretty much all of them that I am aware of. And that's the unique thing about the Windows. The structure is open so there are ways to do things directly to it. I will give you 12 tips for setting up a Windows computer to keep it from spying on you, both by Microsoft and hackers, and giving you the tools to combat malware. Tip number one, no Microsoft ID. First, when you create an account on Windows 10, it will keep asking you for a Microsoft ID. And if you don't have one, it will ask you to make one. Stop! Although I have a Microsoft ID, do not log into your computer with a Microsoft ID. I actually have not had any reason to use a Microsoft ID, so look carefully at the sign-in screens. There will always be an option to opt out with what they call an offline account, or sometimes they call it a local account or local computer account. Microsoft wants to confuse you so they call it something else in different spots and settings. Just know this, if you're asked to enter a Microsoft ID, cancel out and there's always an option to skip it. Another case here, if you use the Microsoft Store, they again ask you for a Microsoft ID, supposedly to sync with multiple devices or to take your credit card info. Don't do that. Who cares about syncing? Allowing this will have grave consequences for your privacy later. On the Microsoft Store, if you download a free app and it asks for a Microsoft ID, click on Cancel and the download will go on anyway. If you want a paid app, I'm sure there's a way to buy it without having to go to the Microsoft Store. By the way, just an FYI, Microsoft blocks VPNs on the Microsoft Store if you installed a VPN on Windows 10, but it cannot detect a VPN router. Tip number two, multiple users. On your login ID to the computer, remember that the first user is the admin user but follow two rules at all times. Always have at least two users on the computer where one is the admin and the main user is not. And second, do not use your real name on the login. Make the admin user something generic like user, which is your first login. Then later on, make a second user that is not the admin and call that user admin. Just another trick to confuse some hacker. Did you get that? Admin is not really an admin. It's like opposite day. Remember that on Windows, 
the admin user has to set up the second user in settings account family and like i said before choose the option local user only no microsoft id the point here is that in normal use you always have to be the non-administrator account that is that is your everyday login in most cases you can even install apps as long as you enter the password of the administrator account but the important reason for this rule is that malware cannot take hold if the user has no admin rights and we call the user admin just to confuse any malware tip number three computer name another rule when setting up a computer do not use a real name in your computer name don't say sarah's msi laptop keep it generic with no name and definitely not the lopez family computer this computer name and sometimes the login is sent to external parties and can identify your computer for example the computer name is frequently sent as an identifier on some email clients you may have a fake name on the email but your real name could be sent without you knowing Tip number four, disable AMT. If you have an AMT V Pro or the Intel management engine on your computer, run the program to disable it. I have a link in the description where you can find disable AMT. In my case, I ran that and it appeared to work on disabling my own AMT, though the error messages shown here suggest that it was partially disabled already. Good to know it's covered though. Tip number five, Cortana. Definitely, you have to eliminate Cortana. If Cortana is running, everything you search for on the taskbar, any question you ask Cortana gets sent to Microsoft. This is another Alexa Echo in your house. We have to remove this completely. Fortunately, in 2020, you can remove Cortana completely using a Windows PowerShell command. What you do is launch PowerShell using the option Run as Administrator then run this command. I'll have this command in the description. This will remove all the Cortana related processes. It used to be complex to do and you had to configure various registry settings. This actually removes the programs and not just changes the registry settings. Now, if you decide to keep Cortana, you're basically sending this information to Microsoft on a regular basis. Listen to this, your device location, your email and text, messages data, your calendar data, apps you're using, your contact list, who's calling you, your frequent contacts, your alarm settings, your music on the device, what you purchase, your search history. So don't use this. Tip number six, Microsoft OneDrive. Microsoft OneDrive is the Microsoft version of Google Drive. Basically, Microsoft wants you to use their cloud drive to store your files. Well, how stupid is that? Whatever files you put in your OneDrive folder then becomes visible to Microsoft. Great spying stuff, but too obvious. It used to be really difficult to remove OneDrive, but Microsoft has simplified it. All you have to do now is to uninstall Microsoft OneDrive from your list of apps. Verify that there's no folder called OneDrive left in File Explorer. By the way, I would uninstall OneDrive before I install any new apps because some apps like Adobe Premiere Pro likes to use OneDrive. Tip number seven, activity history. This is a really important point that most people don't do. Turn off activity history on your computer. This is so obtrusive that it just boggles the mind. Every click on your computer is remembered and if you're logged into Microsoft, they have a record of this. I don't know what this is trying to solve. It's bad enough to have to look at browser history, but activity history shows every file you open. Crazy detailed, and this can potentially have been sent to Microsoft. This is a biggie, so don't forget, or someone who borrows your computer might see embarrassing things. Tip number eight, other telemetry. There are other trackers that are included in your Microsoft setup that are incredibly dangerous to have on your computer. Just to summarize, this includes the unique advertising ID, which is basically a device fingerprint, the diagnostics reporting, and keyboard translators and typing tips. These are all spyware. Fortunately, I'll keep this simple for you. Go to settings under privacy and turn off every single settings in there. Remember to go to each category, like general, speech, 
inking and typing personalization, diagnostics and feedback, activity history. I also personally turn off most things under app permissions. Here you can judge what's sensible for you. Make sure to also turn off searching in the taskbar because that's actually also going to Microsoft using Edge. Search from the browser search engine that you're using, which leads me to tip number nine, browser setup. As I explained in my browser isolation video, I always set up at least two browsers on the computer, one for Google and one for non-Google. Never log into the non-Google browser. You can log into the dedicated browser if you wish. Usually I have Chrome for Google use and then Brave and Firefox for other uses. As a browser isolation strategy, I might use Chrome for anything Google logged in, Brave for YouTube not logged in, and Firefox for everything else. I don't want any of you to use Facebook, but if you do, that would need its own browser. Again, watch the browser isolation video so you understand the importance of this strategy. Now, each of your browsers should be modified to use a safe search engine. Usually, I use DuckDuckGo. Second, turn off autofill on each browser. This is very important as autofill can leak your data. Tip number 10, remove any pre-installed antivirus. Remember this, an antivirus cannot stop a zero-day malware. The only thing that can stop a zero-day malware is a factory reset. So don't bother with an antivirus. An antivirus just leaves a privileged process running, which can actually open you up to more attacks that you cannot detect. On Windows, I just use the built-in Windows Defender. This just looks at every file and checks for viruses. This prevents a virus from spreading to others, but if you have my two user strategy, this will not be needed because malware can't significantly affect you if you are not the admin user. So make sure to always log in as the non-admin user. In my example earlier, I call that user admin, even though that user is not really an admin. But don't get confused now since it is opposite day. Tip number 11, store all your data to a separate hard drive. In my case, my computer has a second SSD drive. If you don't have that, get a Samsung T5 or T7 and store your files there. Velcro the SSD to the lid of the computer like I show here. The idea here is that Anytime your computer is slowing down more than usual or on a fixed schedule, depending on how risky your environment is, you reset your computer to factory. For a casual user, I would do this at least once a year. If you're not careful with your email downloads, you may have to do this often. And this leads me to my final tip. Tip number 12. Use Thunderbird for email. People. Dump Outlook on Windows. Don't use any other email client on a computer other than Thunderbird. I have tested this extensively. I've been able to do a beacon attack on Microsoft Outlook, Mac Mail, iPhone Mail, Android Mail, and so on. These apps really encourage trackers to be inserted into your emails. And even if you block HTML on your emails, they download in the background and trigger the trackers. Thunderbird doesn't do this. Plus, Thunderbird allows you to receive and send encrypted messages using GPG, which I explained in the GPG video. So there you are, 12 tips and your computer will be as safe as Linux. Wow, long process. Of course, some of these tips apply to Linux users as well, but definitely none of the Microsoft specific things would apply. If my videos help you, please consider subscribing to this channel and hitting that notification bell. Let's encourage the algorithm to share this content so more people get to see it. Privacy is an important fight and we need a large community to make a dent. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and those who buy my products from my store on Braxmay. See you next time.